Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to talk about are four different luxury brands that I see as sort of in the middle. Uh, they're above what we might call standard horology uh, and they're not up there with the high, high horology. Uh, some of them, you know, might argue one way or the other, oh, these are really super high horology, and in some respects they may be right, but these are sort of what I consider to be the mid-range. Uh, the four brands are Breguet, Gloss Huda Original, Rolex, and Grand Seiko. So let's take a look at these and see what might be available. Now, on the higher end, uh, is Breguet, and these are sort of at the bottom of that, so we're we're not looking at the where they go, and this is true with all of them that we're going to take a look at. The first one is this Type 21. Uh, the Type 21 is a, to me, I like it because it looked like, if you're going to have a, a watch with a chronograph, you might as well have one that's sort of fun and this one looked like a, a fun chronograph it's one that you could wear in a lot of different situations and of course if you like chronographs it's there uh the date window down at six o'clock it's not that it's six o'clock it's a little small for my liking uh and it's got a bezel that you can rotate and uh and it doesn't really overcrowd with uh, sub dials there's sub dials at nine and three but Otherwise, uh, you got the head of uh, the hand date on the outside, and then these other indicators they use, for example, a second hand is used for part of the timing with the chronograph. And it's, it's, it's a very, to me, it was a nice looking watch. Uh, 14,900 is at the near the very top of where we're going to go uh, today. Uh, but it's one of the things that is available, an interesting looking watch. Got a silicon hairspring. I'm not crazy about silicon hairsprings, not because they don't work, and they work with a free sprung uh, balance wheel, but <laughs> it's silicon, and I prefer non silicon in watches that I collect, not in terms of ones that someone says, oh, this is a good watch. It is a good watch, but silicon doesn't do it for me. Okay, um, here's the Breguet Exercent Classic. Now this this watch is, if you had to, let's say we're, you're making a movie and you want to say, somebody give me a classic dress watch, this is it. Um, that's two hands, thin uh, gold, and it, that's it. I mean, very clean, a sort of a very light guilloche, Roman numerals. This is a the sort of quintessential dress watch. 17,800. Again, that's that's up there. Uh, but I think it's a cool watch. They have an interesting rotor on the back. It's sort of a big micro rotor. <laughs> it's sort of like, you know, sort of jumbo shrimp. Um, the, the rotor is, is, usually when you see a rotor on the back, uh, like that, you, it's either a little bitty micro rotor that's sort of inside the, um, inside the movement is part of the one that's on the same plane as the gear train. Uh, but this one seems to be small and then little on top. I'm not sure. Really interesting. 38 millimeters. I love that size, great size. And... So it's another sort of in the middle. Now, again, this, this only looks like a middle if you're looking at things that are much higher. If you look at Patek Philippe and uh, Audemars Piguet, Vacheron Constantin. Uh, so this, this would be, like I said, barely middle for that. Perhaps a lot, like I said, people think, well, Breguet is really sort of as the top level. Okay, now the next one is more middle. Right. This is Glass Huda Original CQ. All Glass Huda Original are German watches, and 
relative to what you get, you get, I, I think they're great buys. I really do. Now, this one uh, has got an automatic movement, and it's 40 hours, so you can put this thing on. It's And, it, and again, automatic, the works on that. And it's, um, I, I'm not much of a diver watch fan at all nothing against them um and the, i have a couple or at least i have one that was is, is, is a diver but this one is looks more than that it's sort of a kind of watch you could wear just about anywhere anything you wear it to work and uh it's just sort of a good all-around watch it is a sports watch design now it's listed for ten thousand two hundred. and then they says that includes vat well, VAT in Europe is uh, for the EU is 20%. And so I took out the VAT, and so for USD, it'd be 8500 Really nice. Now, one of the things that, that, I, that I noticed here, it says swan neck fine adjustment. Now, what that means, uh, if you have a free-sprung balance, you you don't you can't regulate it uh by changing the spring a curb regulator you can and one of the fine tuning that you can do on a curb regulator is using a swan neck fine adjustment now i know a lot of guys i'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch that but you can do it if you want now the next one again another mid mid level is the gloss hoodie original plano reserve now, the thing I like about this is hand-wound. I like hand-wound watches, and it has a power reserve. Uh, 42 hours, uh, which is, mm, it's sort of like you wind it up in the morning on day one, you wear it for day one and day two, but after work on day two, uh, you better wind it up again. <laughs> so that that's, gives you some time. Uh, and beside, if you're a watch lever, winding is sort of a romance that uh, collectors can have with their watch. It's not weird, just winding the watch. Um, it's, it, it's, it, it has the all of the earmarks, I think, of a, of a well of a well crafted watch. And that's what I like about it. Again, you have the, uh, this includes the VAT without the VAT, which is for those of us in the US, it's $8,000. Now, uh, this next one <laughs> is one that I've sort of championed. And, uh, and this is a Rolex Air King, which is for some reason, um, almost angrily unpopular with certain of the Rolex owners, and I'm not sure why, I like it. Um, the dial on this was after this uh, speed racer called the Bloodhound. And I guess the Bloodhound didn't do so hot as a, as a speed racer. It was supposed to design to break a record and it never did. But that's not the point. The point is, is that Rolex had done the uh, dials, uh, it set up the, the dial panel on the Bloodhound. And so then they, they were thinking of redoing the Rolex uh, Air King dial and somebody said, hey, why don't we use the, uh, the dial style from the instrument panel of the Bloodhound? And they thought it was a good idea because it has sort of an airplane look. And of course, air, the Air King is supposed to be, you know, goes back to the Battle of Britain, I guess, with the, you know, looking at the, um, uh, the dial controls on the Hurricanes and the Spitfires. Uh, but this has got, I really like this. I think it's a neat one. And they've redesigned it for 2022. They've done some work around for the uh, for the band and the case and so forth. But one of the things I really like about this is that the old Air King, and it was not too old either, had exactly the same movement as the Milgoss. Now the Milgoss is much loved by Rolex owners, but it used to be the 
uh, between these two, the mill cost was about two thousand dollars more. And I thought, you know, what, <laughs> why that? But then they came along and they made this new movement called the uh, three twenty uh, thirty two thirty, and it's and it's in the perpetual oyster as well as as this one. And one of the things they put in there, they put in a chronergy, what they call a chronergy escapement, uh, with nickel uh, phosphorus. This is a non magnetic. Uh, medium that they're using. Now, uh, and then they have the parachrome hairspring, which is a is a combination of neobium and chromium, plus some other uh, things in there. And then they have a paraflex shock absorbers. Now, here's something that I just love that Rolex did. Rolex, Patek Philippe, and Swatch all had some deal they went in together on to develop the uh, the hairspring, the uh, silicon hairspring. Breguet has them. They are owned by Swatch, so they could use them. Now, Rolex could too, and but in their main line of watches, they didn't put in silicon hairsprings. They have one Rolex that I know of with one. It was a woman's watch called the Pearl Master, I think, and at least one of the versions of the Pearl Master but not in the main ones. And I, and I think that is, is really great. And they're showing what can be done and you don't have to use uh, silicon. I mean, it's, it's, to me, a quartz, quartz is nothing but silicon and oxygen. It just doesn't do it for me. Uh, so they created this new uh, movement, the 3230, and it's non-magnetic using transitional metals. So good for good for Rolex on that. Now the other Rolex that I I think is and these are both sports watches. I I was thinking, well maybe I had to have a, a dress watch uh like the uh, Cellini, but I got to tell you um Rolex does sports watches. The Cellini's okay, but I just don't see it as the kind of dress watch. For example, like the uh uh, Breguet Classique, that's you know, <laughs> a real dress watch. Um, and the Shalini's are nice watches, don't get me wrong. It's just that in looking at ones for the middle, uh, these are the ones I like. Now, this is Rolex Explorer 2. It's got a caliber 3285. And again, they have the parachrome hairspring. They have the uh, paraflex shock, shock absorber. Uh, there is no uh, silicon in this one either. Again, like I said, good on there. $9,500 in what they call oyster steel. It's, <laughs> I guess, a steel for an oyster. Uh, waterproof. This one I like. They have, I used to be a, I, I wasn't, not a fan. Um, the Explorer 2, I like the design of it for a dual time zone watch. Uh, the GMT Master 2, I don't like as much, even though it is named as a GMT kind of watch, uh, Greenwich Mean Time. But I think a really dual time zone is, is probably the best way to think of these. Okay, now the final watches I looked at is a Grand Seiko. And I found a Grand Seiko that I like on all kinds of levels. This and, and the thing I don't like about Grand Seiko, they name everything with these numbers and you know, like how are you gonna remember all of that? Uh, this one is a Grand Seiko called the SBGM two two one. Sounds like the name of a submarine or something. GMT. Well, it's just Grand Seiko GMT is fine. I really like this watch. It's clean watch. Uh, easy to read. I like the way that the uh, hour hand, or not the hour hand, uh, but the GMT hand goes to different positions uh, that point to on the 24 hour. So the the blue hand that's on the GMT hand takes 24 hours to go around it, whereas the other two hands are we'll call them, you know, normal time. Uh, go around it twice every 24 hours. Uh, four hertz, um, a dual time function, we just mentioned. Uh, it's automatic, you can wind it up by hand and then 
use it as an automatic as well. This watch to me, in many ways, is the best kind of mid-level. Uh, I really like this uh, watch, and this, uh, especially for the price, $4,600. And uh, Seiko has very good, they make great movements. And the Grand Seiko is sort of their their star. Now, this last one is the Grand Seiko, again, this name, SBGA211 Heritage. Now, this has got what's called a spring drive. And the way a spring drive works is that it works like an automatic. You got the rotor and everything. And then you, you have a, you wind it up uh, like a, an automatic except what happens is that the power from the spring provides enough electrical current for it to uh, to run a quartz. So you have a quartz watch with an automatic winding to it. There's no battery in it. And to me, it's a piece of brilliant engineering, but it's not something that I'd put in my collection. Not the, the same thing with the, with, um, the silicon hairsprings, I just don't want those in my collection, not because they're bad, because that's not what I'm interested in collecting. And that being said, a lot of people might look at this and say, this is great. You can, you can have the accuracy of the of a quartz, and yet it can have also all of the features of a traditional mechanical watch. $6,200 for this particular one, uh, again, this is this very accurate. Uh, this one is made with high intensity um, titanium. <laughs> really, very well made watch. And if you if this is something that the kind of thing you know, you don't care what you put in your collection. I'm not. I don't mean it that way. But I mean, like you know, well, why not? You know, a little of this and a little of that. That's okay. Let me know what you think. And uh, until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. It's an opportunity to subscribe if you'd like.